Hey, welcome back to Hardly Tech. Today we're taking a look at performance in Spider-Man Remastered on the Asus Phoenix RTX 3060 V2 12 gigabyte. We'll be starting off testing at 1080p with ray tracing off, ray tracing on high, and ray tracing on very high. No scaling, but we will be taking a look at some scaling performance at the end of the video. A quick note on performance, since I'm recording this on the PC that I'm gaming on using Shadowplay, there will be a very slight dip in performance compared to what you would get if you were not recording. Something in the neighborhood of about 4 to 7 frames per second on average. With that said, let's get into the testing. At 1080p, we're seeing very good performance while we're swinging around the city. With ray tracing off, we're generally seeing performance between about 90 to 100 to 110 FPS. When there's not as much going on on screen, upwards 120 to 140 FPS, but that's not the norm. With ray tracing on high, we generally see frame rates between about 75 to 85 FPS, give or take a few. And with ray tracing on very high, we see frame rates right around 65 to 70 FPS. I was actually pretty surprised with this outcome. I thought with ray tracing on, performance would be a lot worse on this GPU. Now once we get on the ground with a lot more effects on display and we're in combat, frame rates dip quite a bit, but they're still very playable. With ray tracing off, we generally maintain about 75 to 80 frames per second, which is pretty dang good. Ray tracing on high, we see frame rates right around 65, sometimes down about 60 FPS, but definitely a steady playable experience with VSync on. With ray tracing on very high, however, we start to dip below 60 FPS. It's not all the time, but it's just enough that with VSync on, you'd probably notice a bit of stuttering and slowdown. Now, I included this segment that has a cutscene, even though I tend to keep story segments out of these kinds of previews and reviews, but I wanted to highlight it because we're seeing dips below 60 even when we don't have ray tracing on. It's a little bit concerning, but it is just a cutscene. Once the cutscene enters the Fisk building, frame rates come back up where you'd expect them. So maybe this is a situation where a patch can fix this performance. I guess we'll have to see. Moving on to 1440p, we're once again using maximum in-game settings. Save for anti-aliasing, which we're using TAA instead of DLAA, because that takes a bit of extra performance, and I figure, meh. And once again, we're using ray tracing on high and ray tracing on very high. No scaling. Swinging around the city in 1440p with ray tracing off, we're seeing frame rates right around 75 to 85 frames per second, which is pretty nice, to be honest. With ray tracing on high, we see frame rates right around 60 to 65 FPS, and if I weren't recording, we'd probably hit 70 once in a while, so not bad. I think you could play this on the regular at 1440p, high ray tracing, and have a good experience. With ray tracing on very high, even when I'm not recording, frame rates are right around 55 to maybe 58 FPS, not quite maintaining a solid 60 FPS, but so close. You could easily turn down a setting or turn on scaling and have a good experience. Now, once we get on the ground and we have a lot more effects and characters immediately on screen, even with ray tracing off, we're only maintaining about 60 FPS here. Though that is good enough to have a good VSync experience, if you don't mind that, or to have a VRR experience right around 60 FPS on your display. Ray tracing on high, however, puts us right around 48 to 55 FPS, not quite 60, but it is still pretty nice. You could easily turn down a couple settings, and with ray tracing on very high, we're closer to 40 FPS. Not perfect. I'd prefer a little better, but this is a 3060. I'd say it's doing pretty well. During the cutscene segment, we once again dip well below 60 FPS, mainly when we're up close and personal with all the characters and all the extra effects right in our face. Once we take to the skies and get inside the building, frame rate comes right back up to where we would expect. Ray tracing off around 70 to 80 FPS. Ray tracing on high, somewhere between 55 and 65 FPS. And ray tracing very high, around 40 to 55 FPS. Definitely playable, but I would recommend turning down a couple of settings or maybe using SMAA instead of TAA. Performance hit isn't quite as much. A few more shimmering jaggies, but I don't mind it. And now it's time to check out 4K. And no scaling, would you believe it? Okay, okay, there's a little bit of scaling. We're gonna use scaling with ray tracing on very high because there's no way we're gonna get playable performance any other way. 4K with ray tracing off, flying around the city, we're seeing right around 45 to 60 FPS. And this is true even when I'm not recording. Performance does swing around wildly, haha, <laughs> puns. But it is still playable. Now with ray tracing on high, we're seeing right around 40 frames per second when I'm not recording. Maybe up to about 45 to 50 sometimes. It's not perfect, but it does look cool. 
looks really nice, not gonna lie. And performance with ray tracing on very high with DLSS on performance. The image quality is pretty good. It's not quite as clean as with native 4K. I mean, it's DLSS on performance mode. What can you expect? But performance is very good. When we're on the ground with a lot of effects and a lot of characters on screen in combat, with ray tracing off, we're seeing about 35 to 40 FPS, a little bit higher when I'm not recording, but it's definitely no 60 FPS experience. With ray tracing on high, we're seeing a solid 30 to 35 FPS. Still, not great, but if you want a cinematic experience, I guess you could make this work. And with DLSS on performance and ray tracing on very high, we're getting about 45 to 50 FPS, much closer to what I would call acceptable. When we take this over to the cutscene segment, the frame rate comes to a screeching halt. This is just bad. 25, 30 FPS, even with ray tracing off. Worse with ray tracing on high. Oof. When we play with ray tracing on very high, with DLSS on performance, it's closer to 45 to 50 FPS. But this is mainly, again, when you're up close with a lot of effects and characters on screen. Once we get back into the action, frame rates come right back up, just as we saw previously. Hopefully this is something that can be fixed. If not, I guess we're just going to have to live with it. It's not the end of the world, because it's a cutscene, but it's just not great. I, I wouldn't call this polished, to be honest. Lastly, I wanted to check out some more 4K performance. I wanted to compare the image quality of ray tracing on high in 4K, but with DLSS on balanced, versus the performance and image quality of 4K DLSS performance, but with ray tracing on very high. Now, I'm just going to give you the gist of what performance is like here. It's very close. DLSS performance, but with ray tracing on very high, it looks a little bit better with ray tracing and shading, I would say, and of course lighting. But ray tracing high with DLSS balance gives slightly better performance, and you still get the gist of ray tracing. You know, it's not as nice, but it still looks better than standard. When you're flying around the city, performance is right around 60 FPS. When I'm not recording, we're definitely at 60 FPS. And if you have a VRR display, I think you wouldn't even notice that you're dropping into the 50s. When you're on the ground in combat, it's more like a 40 to 50 FPS experience. Still definitely playable. And of course, the same issue with up-close cutscenes. Performance drops when there's a lot of stuff on screen, but once you get back into the action, up into the air, or when you're fighting other enemies and whatnot, performance picks back up. Considering this is an RTX 3060, not even a TI, I'd say this is pretty acceptable. I didn't expect this GPU to do even this well, so I call this a win. Now, I hope that there are some improvements to the game as time goes on. I will say, though, I've been enjoying the haptic feedback on my PS5 controller. It's pretty cool. It's not as involved as some other games, but it's still really nice. And I would much rather studios put in the effort to have it included on the PC versus not and just forget that it exists. I think it's a great feature. I hope they continue to do this in the future. With all of that said, thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new here or if you enjoyed this video, found it useful, consider hitting that like button and subscribing all over that other button. I'd really appreciate it. It helps out my channel a ton and I really, really appreciate your support. If you'd like to support the channel directly, I do have a Patreon. I have it on the main page here on YouTube, or you can find me at hardly underscore tech on Patreon. You can check out my Twitter at hardly tech. I appreciate chatting with all of you, getting new ideas, seeing what you want to learn, seeing what else I can incorporate and make better for the channel. We just hit a milestone here on hardly tech. We just surpassed 500 subscribers, so give yourselves a pat on the back. You deserve it. And I'll be making sure to keep in touch with you all on a weekly basis, since I now have community posts unlocked. Whether you're new or you've been here since the beginning or somewhere in between, I really appreciate it. And I hope you stick around to see where this channel goes, because I'm having fun. I enjoy making these videos. I'm learning a ton. And I hope you are too. Thank you all once again. I hope to see you on the next video. Bye!